I'm fairly confident in saying at this point that this is the most important and encouraging news about COVID so far. It's not a cure per se, but it's a huge step towards improving outcomes and the first truly effective treatment. I'm filming this on my phone without my microphone or anything, so apologies for the sound, but I wanted to get it out quickly. This is my ward's booklet for the recovery trial, uh, because we're one of uh, 175 hospitals uh, that have recruited almost 12,000 patients for this landmark study uh, all across the UK, which has not only produced the first real breakthrough, but it's a testament to the randomized controlled trial and to a nationalized health service that could coordinate such a huge effort. After all the hype about expensive drugs like remdesivir, ritonavir, recovered plasma from survivors, or Dr. Trump's favorite drug, hydroxychloroquine, in the end, it's humble dexamethasone that has won out. How do we know? Because recovery is a seven-arm trial, meaning that patients recruited were randomized, allocated randomly into one of these uh, treatments that are on the screen now, which is the fairest way to show what really works. Um, the hydroxychloroquine arm, and the drug that's gathered so much attention worldwide, was terminated early due to worries about harm, whereas the dexamethasone arm was terminated early as well, but due to a clear benefit. This meant that it's no longer ethical to give the other treatments and deny patients access to dexamethasone because it works. This is uh, the habitual pito rule or the habitual pito boundary. So what is dexamethasone? Well, it's a steroid medication. It's about as old as the hills. It's cheap as chips. It's familiar to every doctor and nurse and certainly every pharmacist. We use dexamethasone for all kinds of things. Um, and steroids in critical illness is hardly a new concept. It's been trialed in many de diseases before and found to be ineffective uh, for most of them. And actually guidelines at the beginning of COVID said, don't give steroids as we assumed it would be the same. We didn't think it would be harmful necessarily, but that it probably wouldn't work. But of course, that's the beauty of medicine is that you're often proved wrong. Now, a key point to emphasize is we're going off a press release about DEX. Um, we haven't seen the published paper yet, which is a bit of a shame, but I guess just that's the way things are going in, in the COVID era, publishing things very quickly. Uh, but I'm sure it'll come out soon. Um, if you've watched my channel before, you know that I hate hype and I did have to think twice about uh, what I should say in this video, but I think it's reasonable to be excited here based on the figures that have been published so far and the stellar uh, reputation of the team that have led the research. So what did it actually show? Six milligrams of dexamethasone, which is just one of the vials inside here, um, which is you know, a fairly sizable dose, but not massive or tiny, was given for 10 days to 2,104 patients and mortality at 28 days uh, was compared against not only the other arms of the trial, but against usual care, i.e. what majority of hospitals are doing around the world at the moment. DEX reduced mortality by a third in ventilated patients. That's very big. For every eight ventilated patients you treat with dexamethasone, you will save one life. That's a number needed to treat of eight, which is seriously impressive. For patients who are less sick, who are just requiring oxygen, but not a ventilator, mortality was reduced by a fifth, which shows that the sicker patients are deriving more benefit, which is again, another encouraging sign for efficacy. So I've given my shout out already to the power of randomized control trials. Let me now praise the system that made this possible, the UK's National Health Service. A trial like this, which was set up so fast and recruited so many patients across the country, simply would not have been possible in a country like America and its disjointed system of hundreds of unlinked private hospitals. The National Health Service has been saving lives in the UK for 70 years, and now maybe it'll be saving lives across the world. Even though I'm just the most tiny of cogs in this huge machine, um, where thousands of people have contributed to this result, I feel very proud indeed. And I look forward to reading the full study. So cautious optimism, but uh, I think this is a very exciting development and the first genuinely uh, good news from a, a drug point of view about COVID-19. Stay tuned for more.
On the subject of coronavirus, I'm actually working with a team from the London School of Economics on a massive global study, and we need your help. The following one-minute film in an entirely different aspect ratio will explain what it's about, and if you want to take part, the link is below. Our university. A magical time in your life, one that's about so much more than just learning. It's where you grow into an adult, find that special someone, or maybe not. Learn life skills and make friendships that last a lifetime. Except, that's all changed. Universities all over the world are unrecognisable. Bustling seats of learning reduced to ghost towns. Online graduation ceremonies, Skype vivers, virtual lectures. Will going abroad to study become a thing of the past? Will freshman parties become long-forgotten memories? Maybe you're not a student. Your lab got closed in the middle of that crucial experiment. The lectures that you deliver can't be Zoomed. Your life was already overwhelmed with administrative work. Coronavirus took all those challenges and ramped them up a notch. If the pandemic caught you at university and your work or your study were impacted, share your experiences here. How have the past few months been for you? How do you feel about your future? Five minutes of your time might actually make you feel a bit better and you can help us all construct a map based on your experiences of the pandemic's impact across the globe.